thinking about what to do at the beginning of the year, uh, some of the thoughts that I'm going to share with you this morning uh, came across my mind. Um, it's pretty difficult to, to have words for what many of us have experienced over the last 24 to 36 months with the pandemic and not being able to do the things that we're used to. However, um, we have a new year before us, 2022, and we're excited here at Rives Baptist Church about what God is going to do, um, and we're counting on Him to show us and give us direction for that. Um, I'm not one, <clears throat> and if you know me, I'm not one to uh, do uh, New Year's resolutions. Um, I don't do them because I break them all the time if I would was to do them. So it's just setting myself up for failure. I don't do that. But the, I was thinking about this and I thought to myself, how and what should I, should I share with our folks in order to encourage them um, in uh, this year and how they move forward? So I was uh, listening to music. I, I love music. I love listening to music. I love playing it. And uh, I was listening to a particular song that had uh, some words in it, and I thought, I, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna research that and read it and, and figure out what's going. On. So I wanna, I wanna share that with you this morning. It comes from Psalms chapter 30. Um, David um, here writes this psalm, and it's actually written in song form to be sung, and um, David. Uh, obviously is rejoicing because uh, he was in um, some trouble, he had some highs and lows in his life, and this is a response to one of those events in his life. So this morning I want to read that for you and briefly tell you a Bible story that coincides with it, and hopefully it will give you some context um, about why David wrote what he wrote in Psalms chapter 30. So let me read for you, and then we'll move forward. Psalm chapter 30, David says this, I will extol thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up, and thou hast let mine enemies rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cried to thee for help, and thou didst heal me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from Sheol. Thou hast kept me alive, that I should not go down into the pit. David says in verse 4, Sing praise to the Lord, you holy ones, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, but his favor lasts for a lifetime. Weeping may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Now as for me, David says, I said in my prosperity I will never, never be moved. O Lord, by thy favor thou hast made mountains to stand strong, and thou didst hide thy face and I was dismayed. To thee, O Lord, I called, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is it if the I go down on my own blood and go down into the pit? Will the dust praise thee? Will it declare thy faithfulness? David continues to say, Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, <clears throat> be thou my helper. <clears throat> thou hast turned for me my mourning into dancing, and thou hast loosed my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Thou, that my soul may sing praise to thee and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to thee forever. I read this psalm and I think, what is David talking about? Like, it sounds like there was something really big going on, and he was at the point of death. And God saved him. Um, so, in my years of studying the Bible and reading, I always believe that there's a story behind the story. The thing behind the thing. And in this uh, verse that David wrote in this chapter, it's no different. Um, this coincides, actually, with a story that's found in uh, 2 Samuel. And um, it's recorded here. Uh, in pretty good detail, and so what I want to do is tell you that Bible story. Um, I don't want to read you the whole passage, because that would, it would take too much of our time, but I want to tell you the Bible story about 
what led up to David writing <clears throat> the 30th Psalm that we just read. So David was a young boy, and uh, he was a shepherd boy. He watched the sheep for his dad. His older brothers, of course, were in the army of Israel, and they were always at battle and fighting. But David was uh, asked to <clears throat> stay in the fields and watch the sheep and protect the sheep and the flocks for his dad. He did that. And one day, as many of you may know this story, um, he took food to his brothers who were in battle with um, the Philistines. The Philistines happened to be a pretty strong army, big men, one in particular, as you know. David um, takes the food that he had for his brothers, and um, he overhears this giant in the valley uh, screaming and blaspheming God, and it really upset David. David was uh, angry at anyone who would dare to say things about his God. <clears throat> so David, the shepherd boy that he was, stepped up, and he said, well, let me go fight this Philistine. And, of course, as you know, the story goes, they tried to give him armor, they tried to give him a shield, and everything wouldn't fit. It just, he wasn't, he wasn't a guy that fought in the army, so, and he was a small uh, young lad, and, and so, therefore, none of it fit. So, he said, I, I will go down, I will take my um, slingshot, and I'll go down and grab some stones from the brook. Um, and God is going to be with me. He did that. You know the rest of the story. David picked up some smooth stones, hurled them at Goliath, and uh, in the ultimate end, ended up killing Goliath. And he was victorious in that battle for uh, the nation of Israel and for his people. David's life um, started that way. Uh, eventually, David's dad, Saul, um, was getting old in age, and Israel needed a new king, um, and David actually became the king. And so David reigned in Israel for many, many years. <clears throat> David had many, many successes, but as you know, David also had many, many failures. David was um, a person who committed adultery. David was a person who tried to get somebody killed by sending them into battle to cover up his sins. And many times in David's writings, we find that he's seeking God for the bad choices that he made. And so I find this interesting because, you know, one of the things that God says about David is, well, wait, he's a man after my own heart, but yet he did all these things as well. So I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool and unique. Of course, we see God's grace and mercy uh, in David's life as we do in our own. And so... David's life was riddled with those ups and downs, the bad choices, and the good choices that he made. Towards the end of his life, though, um, David um, was, again, while he was king, in another battle with the Philistines. It seemed like the Philistines were the arch nemesis of Israel. They were battling over some land um, that, that you may... Uh, might come to your recollection that still goes on today, battling for the land that, is, that belongs to Israel. And so David, um, as he approaches this battle, he's getting older. Uh, he makes a choice um, to uh, do something before he goes into battle with the Philistines. Now, I firmly believe that even though David won the battle when he was a boy, won the battle for Israel when he was a boy, and he uh, was victoria, victorious over Goliath, I still believe that there was fear. It's hard for me to fathom uh, a teenager not being scared uh, when he's in this big, the fight of his life against this huge nine-foot giant. And so I think David's life was kind of riddled by some of that stuff. And, and, and it shows here in, in um, 2 Samuel 24 about what he did. So Israel, again, was, like I said, in uh, the heat of the battle and getting ready to battle with the Philistines. David decides that he should count the men to see if he has enough 
to win the fight. You probably know where this is going because um, God had always said that um, he would take care of his people, Israel. We know that from the Abrahamic covenant. The Abrahamic covenant says, I will bless thee that bless you and I will curse them that curse you. God promised to take care of Israel and this was no different. Apparently David decided that he wanted to take this little bit of a matter into his own hands, number the people so that he felt secure enough in, in being able to fight the battle with the Philistines. Well, it starts out this way. He, he uh, begins to uh, uh, go down this road, <clears throat> and he tells uh, his commander, uh, Joab, to uh, go ahead and number the people. Well, Joab did that. Of course, he had mentioned to David in this Bible story that, David, I, I don't think this is a good idea. I don't think we should do this. I don't think this is a good choice. Let, let's, let's not do this. And so um, David said, no, I, I, want you to, I want you to number the people. Um, so against uh, Joab's own conscience, but in obedience to David, he numbered the people and um, men that were going to fight. And he came up with a million one hundred men uh, that would fight in battle. Well, we know from the first verse of this chapter that God was angry with David's choice. David chose to take that into his own hands. And so God was displeased with David, very, very upset. And um, he knew that, and, and David realized it afterwards. But here's how the story goes. Uh, God, said to, um, God said to David, um, David, uh, you have three choices because you disobeyed me. Um, you can have uh, three years of a famine. You can have uh, three months of um, a battle and a war with your enemies, or you can have three days of pestilence uh, that I will bring on you. And so we see that um, David is being um, punished and he's being scolded by God for his choices. And I think to myself, wow, and that happens, seems to happen to me a lot. I make some certain choices and I'm like, Oof, that was wrong. And, and God is, um, he disciplines me at times, as, as he does us all. Um, but he's so gracious and merciful. So at the point of this um, time when David finds out um, he is going uh, to have to suffer some consequences for his choice, we see that um, David starts to become very aware of his sin. And he begins to repent. And as he's repenting, um, we see that uh, the, the discipline had already started to take place because God had sent an angel to kill 70,000 of the men that he counted. Oh, you counted 1,100,000, I'm taking 70,000 of them right off the bat. And, and David um, was in the middle of recognizing and realizing that, man, I really sinned against God, and, and this is affecting the people. My choice as a leader is affecting those around me. Um, as I thought about that, that brings a little bit of sobriety to the task that we're given as pastors and leaders of the church, that we need to be very in tune and obedient to what God has for us so that we can lead his people in the right way. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, wow, this is big. This is, this is big. Like David, David is responsible and he's getting in trouble. What we see is, what we see is David as he appears to this, to, to arrive at the place of repentance in his own heart and sees that he's um, disobeyed God. Um, we, we notice that God, in 2 Samuel, God tells the angel, okay, stop what you're doing. I see that David is repenting. That's enough. We, we, we've gotten his heart back. And so David, <clears throat> and at this point, 
it will do anything that God asks them to do. And as we read further in the narrative, we see we see that um, God says to him, David, I want you to build an altar, and I want you to go to Arunah, the Jebusite, and I want you to build an altar on his land, um, the threshing floor that he has. A threshing floor is where wheat is separated from the outer layer, and the wind takes away the bad stuff, and the good stuff falls to the ground. I find that very interesting. Of course, another sermon for another time. Um, But we see David is being asked to go to that land. So David obeys. He goes to Arunah, the Jebusite, and says, I want to buy your land um, for uh, an offering place to God. And, of course, Arunah says, no, you don't have to pay for it. Um, You can have all the cows, the cattle, use them for the sacrifice. You can have the land. And, of course, David, as king, uh, you know, he, he says, well, wait. No, I want to pay for it. And so the Bible records that David paid 600 shekels. Um, and in our terms of money, that's uh, well over $300,000. Which So it was a lot. Even though he was a king, <clears throat> it still cost something because of David's choice. And so David... Uh, buys the land from Arunah the Jebusite, and and he begins to construct um, this altar, and he starts to offer sacrifices to God. Now, this is where Psalm chapter 30 comes in, because the recording of what, of the aftermath of David's repentance is the song that he wrote in Psalm chapter 30. Now, I know that some of your Bibles may say, that David wrote this psalm in the dedication of the temple. Well, uh, the temple wasn't built yet, and the Bible records that David David was never able to build the temple. God didn't allow that, but he passed that on to David's son, Solomon, and Solomon was able to build the temple. I believe, um, personally, it might have been some of that, but I, I really am I'm pretty confident that this is a response to David's um, confession to God and his thankfulness to God for not um, destroying him, but for undertaking and showing his, uh, David his mercy. And so, as we as we look back at the story behind the story, many times we read verses like. His anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping lasts for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. In context, and related to other passages, this is, a, this is an outcome because of a bad choice and sin that David made. This is not really talking about just different events. This is related to how God dealt with David according to his grace and mercy. And even though David made a bad choice, God still did these things for David. Of course, David was elated. And so it's very very poignant at this point when we realize that, okay, David disobeyed. God was going to punish David, and he did in some respects. But David responded knowing that he displeased, his actions displeased God, all from making one choice. And so I, I look at this and I think, wow, this is, so, this is so awesome because it just is a picture of God's grace, mercy, and love towards us as we make those choices that are wrong, that he will bring us back and it, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be uh, the mourning all the time and and being sorry, which is important, but it's also the fact that we get to start over again, that God allows us to do that. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that God allows us to do that in his grace, in his mercy, and in his love for us. So this story um, has details in it that I find very interesting, and I wanted to point just one out to you. The place where David was told to offer sacrifices, God instructed him, go to this place, buy it from this person, is actually 
the place where the Dome of the Rock sits today and where I believe is the potential building of the new temple, which is yet to come in the economy of uh, the church and what God has for us in the future. So when I read these things, I, I think, um, man, David was no different than me or you or anyone really where we make these choices from day to day, some that please God, others that don't please God, and many times we like to blame everyone else and other things around us when really it's us. And to my point this morning and to encourage you, um, I, as I was thinking about this new year and what to say and how can I encourage people, um, I, I will say this, I would say this. 2022 can be the year for you to make right choices in your life that honor God. Many times we just are quickly driven to make choices by what we see, keeping up with that person. Oh, I want that. Oh, isn't that cool? Um, I'm no different. I, I have a love for guitars. And um, I am challenged all the time that I shouldn't buy any more guitars. Um, but there's this desire, and we all have those desires. And many times, personally, I've made bad choices, and, I, and I've and i chosen to do things. And I see God using his hand of discipline in my life to bring to my mind that, hey, you shouldn't have done that. You should have listened to me. You knew what I wanted from you. And so my encouragement to you this year is to every day, every day, challenge yourself to trust God to make the right choices like David did. And when and if you don't make right choices, be quick to recognize them and to confess those things and to agree with God that he was right, I was wrong, you were wrong, and we can move on. This verse in Psalm chapter 30, one particular point here where it says, God's anger is but for a moment, but his favor for me is for a lifetime. I want you to know that me that is for you. That's for me. Um, that's for all of us that that decide that we want to walk in a way that honors God. So I hope this morning in these few minutes that uh, this was able to encourage you and challenge you to trust God in ways maybe that you've never trusted Him before in, in, in this year. And um, we, we just want you to know that um, we go through the same stuff. We struggle with the same stuff. We walk down the same path. We, we have to trust God daily. I have to trust God daily for His grace in my life when I uh, make choices that aren't exactly what He would want. So for this year, like I said, um, trust God. Trust God to do something in you uh, to make right choices that will honor him and that will um, be able to allow you to live your life uh, with a good conscience, a conscience that's clear uh, between you and God. I just want to say um, thank you for tuning in today. We're excited about what God is going to do here at Rives. Uh, you're welcome to join us. Our services are Sundays at 1045. Um, and we have a very laid back setting. We want you to feel like you're welcome and that you're a guest in our home. Um, and so when you come, uh, don't forget to introduce yourself if you've never been here before. But we're, we're thankful that um, you tuned in today. And we're looking and uh, looking forward to see what God is going to do in this year through the, the lives of the folks here at uh, Rives Church. So as I close today, let me pray for you and ask God's bless, blessing on you as you continue the day. Lord, thankful for who you are, thankful for your grace, mercy, and love. I pray, Father, that you would Keep us mindful that you desire us to make choices in our lives that honor and glorify you. 
I pray for those that make that commitment to you to give an effort and to trust you for their daily lives. I pray for our church. I pray for those that are here, that, that are doing that, that are serving, that you would encourage us to live in a way that honors you and that draws people to Jesus, your Son. Thank you for the things that you've done for us, even during these last 24, 36 months. Father, things that we can't even explain in ways that you showed up, that we, we were just astonished at and shocked by, and we're just encouraged by how you take care of us. I pray for everyone listening. I pray for those that are, that are in need. I pray, Father, that you would, you would bring down what they need, allow them to trust in you, allow them to find their strength, their hope. Um, in you today. Father, again, we thank you for being such a good God and such a loving God. Thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus, who died for us and who now lives so that we can live. Father, as we continue the rest of this day, give us strength to do what's right in your sight and to live a life that's honor, honoring and pleasing to you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, thanks for tuning in, and have a great day.